back here at the Brickyard 400 presented by Golden Corral and uh, we approach the halfway point and coming off at pit road is the 82 of Scott Speed. He had a tire issue and we may get an idea of what happened because Jimmy Johnson was uh, right alongside and he came in shortly thereafter. And there's the net result as the left front is down. Question of that, Jimmy Johnson, does he have any damage? Looks okay right now. Yeah, it looks like he hit him with that right rear corner kind of away from the wheels. Scott Speed, not so lucky. He got that tire rub and uh, instantly cut the tire down, so he had to come in. Speed comes back out in 31st position, one lap down. Jimmy's running in 21st. You could see some damage on the right rear of that car, and that's a big part of the aero package of this car is in the, that right rear quarter panel, so that could hurt Jimmy. He's got a long way to go. He is a full 15 seconds behind the race leader right now. Let's go back up front and set the top four for you. It is Greg Biffle, followed by Juan Pablo Montoya, Jamie McMurray, and Clint Boyer. It's one Ford, followed by four Chevrolets. Let's go up to speed, and we'll pick it up with fifth place, Kevin Harvick, Dave. That's your championship leader right now. Remember, he started today with a 100 point, a 103 point lead over the field, so pretty comfortable as he heads toward the chase. What they've been fighting today has been mostly a tight race car. Tight, tight, tight on the first several runs, and then finally on the last run, he used the word better, and they made no adjustments to the chassis on that last pit stop. Jamie? This week, this is the first time they've been on the defensive, feeling like they have a car that is capable of contending. Right now, though, he said the hotter it gets, the tighter he's getting. Dave? Martin Truex Jr. runs right behind him. He started 12th, has moved his way into the top 10, has been running there ever since. Even though his car has been loose on occasion, he's been dealing with a skatey racetrack on occasion. On the last pit stop, they made a wedge and air pressure adjustment because the car was loose into the corner and loose off. Doc? And behind him, the two car, we got the Bush brothers running together. Kurt Bush in the two car. Remember, Roger Penske has never won a Brickyard 400. And Kurt Bush, despite having some handling trouble early on and having a love nut hung, which cost him about three seconds on pit road, has now moved that car back into the top ten at eighth position. Behind him in ninth spot is Kyle Bush. Remember the last one incident where he got the left front fender caved in, got some damage on the nose, and he fixed it. From 37th back to 12th, and is now being shown in the top 10. But they made an adjustment a moment ago, and here's what Kyle had to say. Yep. Typical indeed. Should have left it alone. And what he's referring to is the car was getting tight toward the end of a run, and they came in and made a very slight air pressure adjustment, and now the car has swung the other way and is loose. Dave. Jeff Burton, you guys mentioned it earlier, was near the top of the practice charts yesterday, but has not had the best day so far. Running 10th, uh, but uh, the, on the last run, he said he needed more rear grip. He reported that earlier in the race, too. So they made an air pressure just to try to catch up with him. And so far, the car Jeff had yesterday, not the car he has today, Marty. All right, thanks, Dave. And, of course, uh, after that, as we take a look a little bit further back, Jeff Gordon running in the 11th position. They've been fighting tight in, loose in the middle, loose off. That's been their mantra all weekend. And there's a right behind him is Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, and Matt Kenseth with David Reagan rounding out the top 15. Up front, it is the 16 of Greg Biffle. He has never won here at the Brickyard. And the 42 right behind of Juan Pablo Montoya. Jamie McMurray in hot pursuit, but there's the gap of all three of them as they come down the front straightaway. You've got the two Earnhardt Ganassi cars. Chip Ganassi has second and third positions right now in his quest to win the trifecta. The Daytona 500, the Indy 500, and the Brickyard 400 all in the same year. Can he do it? Well, we'll find out because the leader at halfway has won only four times this season. That's bad news for Biffle. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where they've been racing for a century now.
on these grounds at the corner of 16th and Georgetown in Speedway, Indiana. Today, the relatively new tradition of NASCAR at the Brickyard continues with the 17th Brickyard 400. We're just past halfway, and let's take a look at our McDonald's race rundown and catch you up on what's happened in the first part of the Brickyard 400 from the pit studio with Rusty, Ray, and Brad. It was Juan Pablo Montoya starting on the pole in the opening laps of the race. Got kind of crazy. Oh, it really did. Kyle Busch got sideways and took a lot of cars with him. Sam Hornish, one of the big losers in this. Tears right quarter panel up, and it's a big melee off of turn two. Eight cars involved in that one. Turn two, lap one. Then a bunch of people had overheating problems. We saw a lot of guys getting off and getting grassed up there. Uh, up in their radiators and whatnot and causing a lot of these cars to overheat. That is such uh, since then tempered down somewhat, but it's had a lot of problems early, early with guys overheating. Denny Hamlin, Dale Jr., Brad Keselowski among the guys. Now, Jimmy Johnson tried to win this race for a third straight year. He led briefly in this race, but he's really slipped back. Strong early, but as the track changed, seems like they haven't been able to keep up with it. They brought him in, made a shock change, and you can see he was incredibly loose there. Johnson running in 21st position. Now, one problem on Toya, I mentioned started on the pole, dominated the early part of the race, but then, after being well out in front, had to make a pit stop under green with an ugly looking right front tire. Yeah, he had a right front tire problem and big chunks of rubber came out of the right front tire. I, it, just an isolated incident. We haven't had any tire problems all day long. Just this one. It looks like everything's fine for Juan right now. In fact, him and Mont, uh, Montoy and Biff are awful close to speed right now. Looks like Montoy is back up to speed. Montoya cycling back around to the second position behind leader Greg Biffle. Right now running eight tenths of a second behind the Biff, who, by the way, not a lot of people picked to win this Brickyard 400. He is leading. Uh, one of the stories of the day, Chip Ganassi's attempt to win the trifecta, if you will. The Daytona 500, the Indy 500, and the Brickyard 400 in the same year. Plus one Pablo Montoya trying to win both the Indianapolis 500 and the Brickyard 400. Only driver who would have done that. It's been a good day so far for the Ganassi effort. Dave? Well, they run second and third right now. And Chip, you've been here enough times to uh, know what to think and feel at just past halfway. What do you allow yourself to think at this point? I allow myself to think it was just past halfway. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, there's a lot of race to go, you know, 75 or something to go. And, uh, you know, we just got to, you, you got to, you got to just do the obvious things right from here up through the race and we'll see what happens at the end. With, with no other tire issues, it looked like the 42 right front was a fluke. Is that the way you saw it? Yeah, you know, um, so far it looks like a fluke. We'll see. All right. They're looking good right now. Chip has uh, moved his way back and forth between pit boxes. The 42 is pitted first. The one car right next door, Marty. All right. Thank you, Dave. As uh, we scan a little bit further back, behind Montoya is McMurray, and of course, his teammate, Clint Boyer. Kevin Harvick in fifth, and Mark Martin has now found himself in sixth position. Well, this track has changed a lot of, uh, from yesterday and especially today as the race wears on. It's getting faster. The speeds are staying a lot faster this run than we've seen all weekend long. So it means the track's probably taking rubber and it's changing, and you see it's, it's kind of moved away from the Hendrick cars. Jimmy Johnson really struggling right now. Mark is even uh, falling back a little bit. You see Greg Biffle now. He probably started his car really loose, and, it's, and the track is coming to him. Yeah, I think the two guys up front uh, really probably started their cars looser than anybody else. We see Jimmy Johnson losing another spot here. And guys, I mean, Jimmy Johnson just got passed by Bill Elliott and Marcus Ambrose literally in the same lap. So I'm wondering if there's something wrong with that car. Well, I've seen his times be uh, about a second and a half off of what Biffle and Montoya are running. So he obviously has some significant problems there. They're going to have to make some major changes, and that would require a caution flag to make those kind of changes. And not, even then, not going to get back to the front today, I don't think. Everybody's going to have to make changes on their race car because this track is changing. Even Greg Biffle leading this race, if he doesn't keep up with it, he'll lose a handle on it also. So really putting a lot of right, premium on all these crew chiefs. They're going to have to make these changes and really listen to the drivers because it's, uh, it's going to be necessary for them to maintain. Let's go back up front because Juan Pablo Montoya, his lap times have been about a tenth to two tenths a second a lap quicker, and he is closing down now on Greg Biffle. And you know, we mentioned about the fact how halfway leaders haven't had a lot of success this year in the Sprint Cup Series because uh, only four of 19 times has the halfway leader won. Well, here at the Brickyard, only six of 16 prior races has the halfway leader won. 
And sometimes you get out there as a leader, you have to be a little bit careful not to run the car a little too hard, run that right rear tire off of it if these cars are, if they're driving them as loose as we think they are. So maybe Greg has done that. Montoya maybe took care of his a little bit more, and you see him closing here now trying to take the lead back. They both get around Kevin Conway. Just to update you, Kevin is now 33rd and a total of three laps down. This time by the stripe, we'll have 68 laps to go, and that's the margin from the view of Juan Pablo Montoya. What's really great, remember we talked at the beginning and once earlier in the broadcast about his different line, and you can see it from here looking forward to Biffle. It really helps if you've got a tight race car to be able to arc it in and really, you know, make that late turn in because it makes the, the angle of that corner shallower, and it really does help the car run through the corner. On, on the other hand, it's hard to do because you, you kind of lose the back end get in the corner. And that allows him, the way that he drives here, to tighten his race car a little bit more than these other guys where you have Biffle and these others drive it in more. They have to loosen their car to make it turn more in the center where Montoya is doing it just with the racetrack and his style of driving. And from that onboard you saw half a lap earlier, they blew past David Rudiman, our winner just two weeks ago in Chicago. He is two laps down in 30th position. And one thing that I've seen is these two cars race. We've talked about this new Ford engine and, you know, what it does and maybe doesn't do and everything. Obviously, it's performing great right now. We've seen Biffle's car be as strong as anybody on the straightaway. We've talked about these Chevrolet engines, how stout they were, but Biffle's not losing a thing. Doug Yates and his team done a fantastic job there. Yeah, I saw it also on a restart. That's a telling sign of a good engine. Greg Biffle's led more laps today for Ford than they have in the last four races combined here at the Brickyard.